video I'm going to demonstrate some cards and a cute project using our Stampin' Blends and the Under My Umbrella bundle. Now this was an in-person class that I had scheduled that I had to cancel of course and I had planned on offering a tutorial that anybody could purchase uh, but I've decided with everything going on in the world I'm going to offer this online class to everybody for free because I think we all need a little extra inspiration and a whole lot of fun right now. So I'm demonstrating three cards and one 3D project. It's a little post-it note holder and a couple techniques that are really, really cool using our Stampin' Blends. So I hope you enjoy this class. So those of you who had registered for my class, it was a product-based class, so you will have received your Under My Umbrella stamp set and the Coordinating Umbrella Builder Punch. And you will have also received all the pre-cut cardstock and everything that you need to make for these cards and uh, I know you already have your Stampin' Blends at home so this class is basically geared towards using our Stampin' Blends and how to use them but we've decided to also focus on Under My Umbrella stamp set. Now along with Under My Umbrella I'm also using three other stamp sets. Now there are four projects in this class. I have split the videos up into one video per project. So for the first project that I'm going to be demonstrating uh, we are also going Going to be using the Gangs All Mirror, which is a celebration stamp set. On the second card, I'm going to be using the Grass from High Tide, and on the third card from Painted Harvest, I'm going to be using this image right here, and that's going to be the Sun. So if you don't have these stamp sets, go ahead, look through your stamp stash, and pull out something else that you can use, or you can just skip it all together. But when I have my classes, as you know, my in-person classes, I bring all these extra uh, stamp sets, and uh, everything is there for everyone to use. It's a bit different now because all the classes are on online for the time being. So let's get started. I'm excited. So I have a piece of Whisper White and I should mention all of the measurements are part of the tutorial that I'm making available to everybody, not just those who registered for the class. My gift to you, a free class. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to get into all the measurements, but I will just say that this is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I will say that. It's Whisper White cardstock, and to start, I am going to stamp the boot image. So I'm putting that on my blog. Now I'm using Black Memento. That's what you want to use for two reasons. One, it's a photopolymer stamp set, and two, because we're using our Stampin' Blends. Stampin' Blends, you want to use your Memento ink pad. Now one of the projects that I will be doing which will be using window sheets, you will need black stays on for that. So I'm going to show a little trick on how to use the stays on because it will be very sticky and you don't always get a super good uh, crisp line image when you use stays on. I don't ordinarily recommend stays on with photopolymer, but we will need stays on for the window sheet. So we will come back to that a little bit later. So now I have stamped my boots and there's some masking involved in this technique. So I'm taking a post-it note and the reason why I'm folding it in half is so that I can get two masks uh, at the same time. So ink that up and I'm stamping it down and I know that the sticky strip is up on here so I'm gonna have some of that stickiness on the boot. Now the second mask underneath this will not have any of that sticky adhesive on there. So what you wanna do is take your liquid glue, put a little bit of that behind it, set it aside to dry and it will become tacky and repositionable. So I'll just cut this out and then what I what I do is when I cut out my masks I keep them all together in one of our clear cellophane envelopes and put them in the stamp set so I don't have to continuously cut out masks. I'll just show you here here is a clear envelope and I've got masks and all sorts in there so I just keep that in my in my stamp set okay so you see I have two sets of boots so I'm gonna put this aside and I can keep that if I ever lose this one or need another one if I'm doing two sets of boots so I'm gonna put that down just like so and I am going to stamp this flower image next and squeeze that onto my little block 
And I'm just going to stamp it so that the corner of the flowers hang off this boot a little bit. And I'm making sure to get a little bit of that flower right onto the boot mask. While that is still on there, I'm pulling in this cutie from the Gangs All Mirror. Stick it on. And I'm stamping it right on top of the boots again. So now when I move this mask, it looks like I have flowers coming out of that boot and looks like this little guy is popping out of those ones. So that's really, really cute. One thing I did forget is I need to stamp the umbrella, the little umbrella handle. So I already have that on here. Okay, so what I am doing, I forgot to put the camera back on, but what I'm doing is I have just stamped this on top of the boots and I also have a mask of the flowers. So I put that down too. And this way, I've got that holder for the umbrella looking like it's coming up from behind the flowers. So I'll put my masks aside. And now I'm gonna do some coloring. So I'm not gonna pull in the blends quite yet. I'm just gonna quickly take my old olive and an aqua painter and add some grass. I'll go up here like that. I love my aqua painters. I, I think I use them in almost every video and almost every project I do. I'm going to add a bit more down here. Okay. Now I'm taking the raindrops and I'm going to add some rain and for the rain I'm using Seaside Spray. Now when you stamp your raindrops you can have them going straight down or you can have them going on a diagonal. Whatever floats your boat. I'm going to do these ones diagonally just for fun. And I'm not going to cover the whole piece. I'm just going to fill in just like that. Okay. Now it's time to pull in the blends. So I'm using my Dark and Light Bermuda Bay. Now when you're using your stamping blends, you can do whatever works for you. Some people like to start with their dark color first and then pull in the light, and some people like to start with the light and then pull in their dark. So it's completely whatever you're comfortable with. I like to start with my dark. So you don't have to press hard with these alcohol markers. A light touch will work and you also don't want to go super close to the edge of the line art because it could bleed out a little bit. So I'm just ever so carefully going down along the boots. I love how these flow. So nice. And I'm just kind of scribbling out and then I'm going to do the same thing on the second boot. Okay, you want to leave some of that white for the light, and now I'm going in with the light, and I'm working it into the dark. Bringing the dark back in, and I'm going to go over where I originally put that dark. And you'll see how it all blends in so nice. There you go. Easy peasy. I'm going to bring in my dark gray and I'm going to add that on the top and the bottom of the boot with my fine tip of my marker. I can see I missed a little bit on the on the little toes, so I'm just going to go in with my dart and just fill that in. Now I'm going to use my light and dark pumpkin pie and I'm going to color my flowers. Now this time I am going to start with the light. And 
And using the fine tip of the dark, I'm going to go around the center. Doing the same thing on the bigger flower, but this time with my Daffodil Delight. And now I'm bringing in my Dark and Light Cherry Cobbler. And let's start with the dark. And because it's a smaller image, I'm using the fine tip end of my markers. I want this one to show a little bit more shading, so that's why I'm keeping a little bit more of that white space uh, reserved for the light marker. And then going back in again with the dark. Now you will notice if you're new to Stampin' Blends that the markers snap on really really tight and that's because the alcohol dries really quick. So you don't want to keep the covers off your markers. You want to put them back on right away. So let me show you what I have. Can you see how I've got the shading looking really nice on those flowers? Let's do the leaves. I'm going to start with my light And then the fine tip of the dark old olive, I'm just going to add that to one half of each of the leaves here. Now to color this cutie, I'm using my light and dark crumb cake, and I'm also going to use my light petal pink. So I'm going to start with the light crumb cake first, and I'm going to keep some of the white on his chest and a little bit of white underneath his eyes, which is where I'm gonna add pink for his cheeks. So I'm just going around the edge of his face, down his nose, over his mouth, and then on his sides and his arms, a little bit underneath his neck. Now I'm taking the fine tip of the dark crumb cake and I'm going to outline this little guy. And I'm pulling some of that dark crumb cake down a little bit. And I'm going to bring in the light crumb cake and just kind of blend in where the dark starts. So that's the beauty of our Stampin' Blends. It's just how you can keep layering and layering until you get the look you're going for. Bringing in my light petal pink and I'm going to add a little bit to his chest and a little bit underneath his eyes. And you'll also notice when you're using these that you'll see the ink kind of moving around a little bit when you overlap some of those colors. Any cute? So there's that. Now the next thing I need to do is stamp my umbrella. So I'm bringing in another piece of Whisper White. This is going to be my scrap piece that I use to punch out my images with. Actually, let's put that up there. Ink that up. And I'm stamping it this direction because when you put your punch in you want to make sure it lines up easily for punching. I'm going to show you something else that I do you might find helpful is I took a piece of scrap cardstock and I just simply punched it out like so and then I can use this as a template so that everything lines up when you go to punch it. So if you wanted all three pieces, you would just, let's put it in this way, you would just put that on your card, you would pick up your stamps, put them inside the template, and once you had all your stamps, you would then pick them up with your block, and then they would all be positioned exactly as the template, and then when you stamp down, they will line up perfectly with your punch. So that's just a little tip that you might find helpful. And then once you have your template, just keep it in your, your stamp case. 
All right, let's color the umbrella. And this time we're bringing in Rich Razzleberry. So I'm gonna start with my dark. And I'm just going to go around the edges of this umbrella. This is probably my favorite color of all my stamping blends. And everybody tends to find their own way of how they want to add their shading and coloring with the blends. Just do what works best for you. So you can see how I've added that dark. Now I'm gonna go in with my light. I'm gonna go around the edges here. Again, try not to get too close to that black line because I don't want it to bleed out. And then work it into that dark. And then we're gonna repeat both with the dark and the light because once that dries, it's uh, nice to go back and add the second layer, which really pulls it in and makes it more intense. And I think I'm gonna go right down here. There we go. And then add my light again, just like I did the first time. And then work it in to that dark. Just keep working it in. And then by doing that, it erases the really harsh lines of the two colors combining together. Now, another good marker to have when you're doing uh, using your stamping blends is our color lifter. This is a bit of a magic marker in my opinion. If you went outside of the lines, like little, there's a little bit right there, you could take the color lifter and just go back and forth and it will erase where you have gone outside of the line, just like magic. The other thing you could do is if you wanted to add highlights or move some of that ink around that you've just placed, you can use the color lifter. So I'm just gonna just give you an example. I'll just go over here a little bit. I want you to see what that does. It kind of lifts, it's, it does what it's called. It's a color lifter. It will lift some of that ink. I'm gonna put ink back down. I just wanted to show you how that works. Do you see how that's lifting that ink? So this is a really handy, handy marker to have. So I'm gonna go back over with my dark. And you just keep playing around until you get the look that you're going for. Okay, I am happy with that. Time to punch it out. And then all that's left is putting the card together and stamping the sentiment. So it's actually quite an easy card to make, lots of fun. For this one I'm using No Matter the Weather, We're Friends Forever. I should mention too, having our uh, piercing mat is really great when you're using photopolymer because it adds that extra padding, so it just stamps that much nicer. So I'm going to put that underneath and stamp it right in the center and I'm going to uh, stamp it right up there. Now if you wanted to, you could pull in the high tide stamp set and stamp the grass. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to use my old olive. And I'm going to stamp that there and maybe one over here. I love how we can use our stamps from different sets together. I just, I think it's so much fun. All right, let's put this onto our card base, which is uh, Old Olive. I'm going to use my snail. Now what I've done is I used the die from the Be Mine Stitched collection so that I can get a nice 
um, pretty little edge to add to this card so I'm just going to put that behind this and then this goes on the card like so and then the umbrella gets put on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And you want to make sure that you're lining this handle up with the little tip of the umbrella. A little piece of paper for the inside of the card. And of course you can decorate inside the cards however you desire. Uh, I usually stamp my inside of the cards before I give them away because sometimes I don't know what I'm going to be using the cards for or for who and so then I can personalize the inside before I send it off. So there is the finished card. Isn't that cute? So there is project number one of four projects of the Under My Umbrella Stampin' Blends class. I hope you enjoyed that. Happy stamping!